Hello and welcome to this short series of software development videos. In this one I'll show you the simple design pattern called dependency injection. The tool we will be using to make this dependency injection work is an interface. So let's start by making an interface. This little example is about a ninja who has a selection of weapons. So our interface will be called iWeapon. This, this interface is very simple. It has an attack, which is when the ninja uses his weapon and we have a distance, as not all weapons are efficient at any distance. And then we have a reload, because some of the ninja's weapons need to be reloaded from time to time in order for them to work. So now we have an interface of the weapon. So let's try and create the ninja. This is the very simple class of the ninja. As we can see here, the ninja has a name, and we are using the ninja's weapon as the interface of the current weapon. We are doing this in the constructor. This is actually the dependency injection right here, so there's no real science to it. It's just a very simple design pattern that says whatever we're handing the ninja in the constructor will be the weapon that the ninja can use. The ninja also have some ability to walk and as we haven't coded the whole game we can see here that we can make some logic that will move him around in the game and it can return true if it was able to move him in a certain direction with a certain distance and falls otherwise. We won't be needing that part just to say that the ninja can do lots of things, for example walk. Under here we have the attack. An attack is just you tell the ninja to attack, so we ask the weapon please do your attack, and if you succeed on hitting the enemy please return the value of that, and if you don't and miss the enemy return the value there. So we are just returning whatever the weapon does. And the same part about reload, so the ninja can't reload, so when we ask the ninja to reload, is actually asking the weapon for him to reload. So that's the ninja, but we don't have a weapon yet, so let's create a weapon for him. And let's start out by giving him a sword. Again, this very simple class here implements the eye we weapon. It is of type sword. And we can see here that our tag method that we implemented here say that if the distance is less than 1.5 meter, it returns true. So if the enemy is pretty close, we can hit, hit him with the sword. Otherwise, it returns false. And reload. The method has to be there, because our interface says so, but you can't really reload sort, so the method is empty. So let's try and use him. So at first, let's create the weapon. Just like this, and then, then we can create the ninja. And of course we don't know the ninja's name, so he will be called X. Let's call him X as a name. And his current weapon is of course the sword. So let's see what happens if we make 
x attack at a distance of one meter. We run the program and it returns true. Yes, we hit him. But now that the enemy is 10 meters away, it returns false. Sorry, we couldn't hit him. Something looks like it works. But why do we want to use dependency injection here? Mainly because now we have a setup where we can add new weapons to this ninja without changing much of the code. So let's try and make a gun, for example. Right click, say add, new class, gun, get rid of all these using that we don't want to use. We say it's I weapon, like this. We ask it nicely, please implement our interface, and it says attack at a certain distance, and reload. This time reloads actually makes sense. But a gun has some ammunition shown. We must add this and a constructor to set the ammunition right. Six shots. The next part is the attack routine. Oh, we can make the reload as well. It's very simple. Just like this. So there's two things that can go wrong in our attack situation. One of them is we don't have any ammo, so let's check for that. So if we got more ammo than zero, that's of course is one thing. And if not, we can't hit anything, of course. So if we got some ammunition, we have used it, because if we got something in our gun and we shoot, we have one less. But the next part is, do we hit him? So if distance less than 25 meters, it's a gun, but it's not a high precision weapon. We return true. But if it's further away, we return false. So now we have a gun for a ninja. See if this works. Let's create the gun. And we can. So let's give him the gun. We can try and shoot here at 10 meters. Yes, we hit him. We're happy. But at 30 meters? No, sorry. No can do. We didn't hit him. Of course, we can extend the ninja function here. So we can make a public word change weapon. And we can make a new current weapon, saying that like this. And now we can make it a little more. So we can say here that at first our ninja attacks with the gun, which it is here. And then we can give him the sword. And making a tag again. At 10 meters and at 10 meters. So this time we have both a sword and a gun. And we create the ninja and let him attack. And then we change to a sword from the gun and let him attack again. Let's see how this works. He hits with the gun, but misses with the sword. We have now seen how simple it is to add a new class 
with a new weapon. For example, we could add a knife to this part. And the only place we should change anything is in the main, in this case, in the game where he's been using the knife or the gun. Of course we should add it there. And of course we should add the class that holds the information about how a knife should react, or a machine gun, or a cannon, or whatever a ninja could use as a weapon. But we don't change the ninja class, and we don't need to change the other weapons. We don't have some switch or if statement that says, if it's a gun, then do this, or if it's a sword, then do this, or if it's a knife, then do this, and we have to maintain this, this if switch thing all the time. Here we just add a new weapon and we just use it. We don't have to change any of the code behind it. Thank you for watching and listening and I hope you had much fun doing this. Hope you do the exercises and learn by it. Thank you for watching.